Welcome everyone to the Snohomish County Transportation Coalition's or SnowTracks uh, bike panel discussion for 2022. This is but uh, May is Bike Month, and so as part of it, we're going to highlight the good work that communities are doing here in Snohomish County to improve bicycling. Um, so very thankful to have you. Last year, we also had a panel discussion on what local communities were doing, and that included City of Bothell. Uh, Edmonds, Linwood, Monroe, and the Verdant Health Commission. And this year we get to have again Bothell because they continue to be doing good work, but also Everett, Lake Stevens, Marysville, and the Leaf Line Trails Coalition. Um, so, just a little bit about SnowTrack for those of you who are new to the organization. SnowTrack advocates for connecting people and communities in Snohomish County and beyond with safe, equitable, and accessible transportation. Um, we really do focus on specific population groups in terms of thinking, how do we improve transportation? And our primary directive is to focus on low income uh, households, people with disabilities, older adults and youth. Uh, because of a lot of the coordination that we do with human service agencies and transportation agencies and their funding streams, we also focus on specific groups uh, of veterans, Medicaid funded transportation tribes and rural communities. And we have a lot of intersectionality in our work towards uh, the population groups of people of color, immigrants, refugees, and people who speak English as a second language or not at all. And so our approach is really to think about the individual and the mobility gaps that they have, as opposed to just the general population. And so that's our approach to this work. Why this met, why this, um, uh, how, so how does bikes fit into this? Well, uh, there's a couple of ways. First, um, for low income, people of color, older adults, uh, traffic violence is a major issue for them. They are the most impact populations from traffic violence. Um, also for youth, bicycling is basically their main way of getting around besides maybe using transit or relying on parents. Um, low income individuals have the highest bike ridership of any population group. Um, our priority populations here on the screen are the most impacted by air quality issues and climate change. In the Snohomish County, more than half of emissions are from transportation, uh, mostly from passenger cars. So if we can make that shift, we can help alleviate issues for our party populations. And finally, um, bicycling is one of the best treatments for people with Parkinson's disease. So as people age, uh, low impact uh, activities like bicycling that really engage the mind in different ways is really helpful. So with that, I'm excited about our panel. Um, we're gonna go in alphabetical order today, uh, starting with the city of Bothell and Sherman Gong, and then city of Everett with Christina Curtis, city of Marysville with Jesse Hannes. Um, and then finally, the Leafline Trails Coalition, not a jurisdiction, but doing important work for our region and thinking about how do we build a, a interconnected trail system uh, with Claire Martini. And then we'll follow with q and I think if we can, we'll try to do Q&A through, throughout for a couple of questions for each panelist, especially for Christina, uh, who may have to leave uh, before the end of the meeting, so, or end of the panel. So with that, uh, thank you all for joining us. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hand it off to Sherman. And so Sherman, you can share your screen and go ahead and get going. Okay, does everybody see that? Yes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> well, uh, good afternoon. Thank you guys for letting me share our plan with you all. Um, this is a good opportunity for a little get some input from everybody and we appreciate that. Uh, I'd like to share the plan with you because it's a uh, like, like uh, Brock just mentioned, it's very important for a process to create a good bike plan and to get you an opportunity to ask any questions of us. Uh, now, uh, Bothell is a crossroads at the north, north end of Lake Washington between Chingis and Homeless County with access to <clears throat> major regional trails. Uh, the Bothell Citywide Bike Plan will provide guidance for the current and future generations to expand and encourage bike use. Uh, cycling is important for our physical and environmental health, 
as well as economic benefits by providing more options for employers and employees and customers to travel safely. You know, Bato uh, already has some great bike infrastructure, uh, like this protected bike lane downtown where bike riders are separated from automobile traffic by a row of parked cars, curbs, and landscaping. But like most cities, uh, Bato also has some places that bike riders avoid or need to be more careful, like this section of Bato Way, which is basically just a roadway shoulder. The Bato uh, bike plan won't make the rest of the city look like downtown, but it will help to identify priority areas for improvement and over time close the gaps in our bike network. Uh, this will make it easier for people to move safely around the city without a car. Uh, for this presentation, we'll be referring to bike lanes in generic sense for any reference to bike facilities. But as we all know, there are several types of bike lanes you'll see in our plan, such as a shared use path or trails uh, and race, uh, race cycle tracks, which are both protected from traffic. And then we also have the buffered and standard bike lanes, which are not protected from traffic, but help drivers and bike riders know where they should drive or ride. So here's why bike lanes are important for everybody. They make it safer for people driving cars. There's fewer crashes, slower speeds, and less congestion. Uh, bike lanes help to designate where cars and bikes belong. Uh, enabling safe bike routes make the city more inviting to a wider variety of riders and is better for personal health and environment, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, bike plans and sidewalks bring more customers to businesses and make the community a more attractive investment for businesses that are considering expanding or moving uh, by offering a viable transportation option to their employees. Uh, safe transportation options provide economic opportunity for people who can't or don't drive cars. <clears throat> they help people not only get to shopping and other businesses, but they also help people get to jobs. Bike lanes can connect cyclists to the many uh, the many wonderful nearby, re, nearby regional trails, and the, such as our Burt Gilman, the North Creek Trail, and the Sammamish River Trails, which all lead into downtown and our local businesses. Before we get into the plan, just uh, take a moment to talk about the terminology uh, for those that are non technical here, I guess, in this group. <clears throat> Both uh, bike lanes are, are any path on a road that is restricted for bicycle travel only. Uh, sometimes they're in the roadway as um, in the same roadway as motorized vehicles. Sometimes they aren't. As I go through the next few slides, maybe think about the route, uh, routes that you would ride a bike on and what would make you feel more comfortable riding them. <clears throat> so protected bike lanes are simply bike lanes that are separated from other users of uh, the road by barriers, landscaping, or both. <clears throat> For the Botha bike plan, the protected bike lanes will come in the form of a trail or separated path or a raised cycle track, which is uh, which are sidewalk height and aligned um, between the sidewalk and landscape buffer, like the one you see on the right, which is actually a two way uh, cycle track. Ours will be one way with uh, this kind of configuration on both sides of the street <clears throat> and directional, basically. Uh, separated bike paths or trails don't typically share any space with uh, motorized vehicles, but often allow pedestrians. Uh, Sammamish River Trail shown here is such a trail. Then we also have um, a share, which is marking on the road like the one you see here. It tells cyclists and people uh, driving cars that they must share the same lane, along with uh, bringing driver awareness that bikes are around they also help bike riders with wayfinding on routes through neighborhoods. Um, this is an overview of the bike plan process. We started in 2018, um, the initial plan development, uh, just kind of started that looking at our old bike plan, thinking that um, we can't just have bike lanes everywhere. We wanna incorporate the nationally accepted new, new types of facilities and how they fit into our network. 
<clears throat> so the initial bike plan was occurred between 2018, 2019, but we had to slow down on public engagement and moving forward due to the pandemic. But uh, in the last two years, 2020 to 2022, we've, uh, moved on with detailed review of potential projects, cost estimates, gap identification in the network, and a level of traffic stress analysis. We're currently in the process of reviewing comments and public comments and recommendation from stakeholders and the general public to draft the final plan. The final draft plan development will occur between now and August. Uh, and it will include uh, comments from stakeholders, city officials, the planning commission, general public, and, and we'll incorporate those revisions and program and policy recommendations. Uh, once finalized, we will submit the plan to city council for review this fall for approval and ultimately inclusion into the city of Bothell comp plan through amendment. But where are we now? This is the city's existing bike network, has two regional shared trails. Um, they provide the primary cross city spine bike facilities. Uh, we have about uh, total in bike lanes and bike routes throughout the city is about 12 miles right now. Uh, in addition to the two regional trails, um, some secondary bike network spine connections include Bothell Way, Bothell Everett Highway, which is a north south route. 228th Street and East West Route and Main Street Boulevard, uh, Beardsley Boulevard, which is also an East West Route that goes by the University of Washington campus. Uh, these corridors include basically just standard bike lane facilities, but the most, but the critical thing is they do not, are not fully connected along those corridors with full bike lanes yet. We're still working on that. Uh, in the initial public outreach, the the city gathered feedback from the community to identify existing conditions, barriers, and gaps in the current bike network and how they could be improved. We identified bike lanes and paths and those gaps. And I'm sure uh, bike riders in this meeting can think of places where you start a, uh, start a bike ride and then the lane ends or and you don't know where to go and you feel uncomfortable and uh, you went from a nice safe path to somewhere that you don't know where to go to next. So need a little wayfinding and continue networks. <clears throat> As part of our analysis, we looked at where reported crashes have occurred between in the five year period between January 2016 and July 2021. We found 20, that there were 20 uh, crashes during that time, primarily occurring at intersections. Uh, with only four crashes, having some serious injuries, but we had no fatalities, which is really good. When cycling in an urban environment, we all have different comfort levels. Some of us are comfortable riding only where there are no cars, while others are fine riding with traffic in the street. As we created this bike plan, the main purpose is we tried to create a long range plan with a network that can be used comfortably by bike riders of all ages and abilities. So thinking about the different kind of cyclists, uh, you can see that bike facilities and the type of riders they attract are related. Shared use paths are attractive to uh, almost all riders, very safe and comfortable. And this relates to something we call the level of traffic stress which you can see is on the like uh, kind of on the right side of this graphic. <clears throat> and we can determine the level of traffic stress of existing roadways, uh, whether or not they have bike facilities on them or not. Uh, you can see that the majority of neighborhood streets, which are the green streets in this map, um, have a level of traffic stress ranking of one or the highest comfort level for most bike riders. Vehicle traffic, in these areas are generally well separated or very low volume from uh, bike traffic and bikes have plenty of room to uh, you, you share a road, for example. Uh, moving down the scale to a ranking of uh, level of traffic stress four or the lowest comfort level are the streets in red 
where there are generally higher vehicle traffic volumes and higher traffic speeds and little or no separation for vehicles and bike traffic. <clears throat> so what about the bike plan that we're pre preparing right now? As I said, the goal of this uh, draft bike plan is to establish the infrastructure at this point in time so we can start applying for funding to build it out. There are still future elements that uh, still need to be worked on out and worked out as this is a living document with topics such as wayfinding, education, enforcement, and bike storage, just to name a few. So don't worry, you can't read uh, everything on the screen right now. I'm gonna zoom in in a little bit. But part A of our plan, <clears throat> there's two parts, A and B identifies the ultimate bike facility network. And this network will be developed through major road improvement projects um, and, and as private development occurs. Although we also have identified some standalone bike projects, um, you know, for the city that really are not going to be attached to road projects or anything like that. Um, for example, for private development, if a private property along 228th Street redevelops, it will be required to redo its frontage to include the five foot protected bike lane, along with sidewalk and landscaping, as I showed you earlier. But again, this will only occur along its property frontage. So we're going to that will just keep adding into the network and keep building on. Uh, if the city can find additional funds, these priority standalone uh, bike projects could occur sooner than, uh, you know, in the long range. It's just a matter of finding that opportunity. Because of the time and resources required to build out the entire Part A plan, we propose to connect as much of the existing network as possible within a 25-year period, roughly, by filling in gaps in the existing bike corridors. Part B of the plan is intended to expand the network by funding projects to fill in existing gaps using um, existing pavement widths and um, you know, looking at opportunities so that we can um, identify the bike network to provide as much connectivity as soon as possible to get people to main corridors or uh, you know, the, you know, the main trails. So let's take a little closer look. <clears throat> This is the north end of the city in our part A plan. Uh, some of the major projects here include the 228th Street corridor to include protected bike lanes. Um, the Bothell Everett Highway, which already has bike lanes on them, but they're you know just like your standard bike lanes, five foot and adjacent to traffic. Uh, we would like to com complete the protected bike lane network along that section. And then the Ninth Avenue, uh, which would also include uh, protected bike lanes taking us to the north end of the city, uh, as opposed to using something along uh, Bothell Everett Highway, you know, up through Thrasher's Corner, which is just uh, lots of traffic and pretty dangerous, actually. So um, the other, the only other project here to show is in the center of the center of the map with the WashDOT Express Toll Lane project that will ultimately provide a new connection from 228th over into Canyon Park Business Park with protected bike lanes and connecting to the rapid transit station there. <clears throat> or a stop, actually, it's not a station. <clears throat> um, this map is the southern end of the city <clears throat> in the Part A development, predominant projects here include our Bothell Way widening project that's currently under design from downtown up to two for basically the county line. Um, uh, the Wayneda Way corridor from, from Highway 522 up to uh, down to, to connect to Kirkland and the East Riverside Drive Trail, which is uh, King County, uh, King County right of way that would connect to ultimately Woodenville on the south side of the Sammamish River. So 
in this, this is the next, this map, we're showing the north end of the city again, but for part B, which is again, the opportunistic, you know, connections we can make uh, using existing pavement and just trying to, you know, make that network more accessible and expanded. In this close up, <clears throat> we can see, I'd like to point out that 228th Street, which is shown as just basically blight bike lanes with the blue, um, is not really, uh, we've, we've made changes already that we were going to take that project out and we're going to identify it as a part B, part A standalone bike project as opposed to trying to finish it with um, finished gaps of bike lanes here because I think for the most part, if we're going to make any improvements like that, we're just going to do the protected bike lanes. Um, we're also considering on Ninth Avenue Southeast, which is um, uh, which is along here, the, the connection that we want to do protected bike lanes on. We originally thought we would be able to put some sharrows there as an interim because <clears throat> there is no width to add any bike uh, bike lanes as a stopgap between the ultimate configuration that, but but with because of the high traffic volumes there and speeds, we're at this time probably thinking about taking out those sharrows as a part of a project. Um, and I found from some research that sharrows, although are, are good for wayfinding and for uh, awareness of for drivers, they do kind of provide a false sense of security for some inexperienced riders. And we feel that maybe it's better to not include them on that street and reserve them for more of the neighborhood greenway type streets. So depending on feedback we'll, that we received during all this out, uh, outreach, um, you know, some of these projects in part B may change, but the identified corridors that we've shown basically will remain the same where we want the network to expand to. Finally, in this shot of the Southern end of the city, um, Again, we have some changes uh, from when we first laid this out. One being this uh, 80th Avenue is not in the city. So that's part of city of Kenmore. So we're gonna take that section out, uh, let them uh, go ahead and build that. <laughs> um, and uh, along, along this section in the middle of town, sort of coming to downtown from the University of Washington campus, which is right here, uh valley view drive we're going to also identify as a um, neighborhood greenway street to connect the campus to downtown um and that will be uh you know like a low speed street with uh bike riders sharing the roadway with cars um <clears throat> we are accepting written comments until May 31st, uh, plan is on the, our webpage at the website here with um, probably taking the month of June to incorporate any comments and uh, make any changes to the plan to get it into a more final form and take it to planning commission July 20th. Um, and then, like I said, we will go to city council this fall. So there's the uh, web page again that you can look at the whole plan. And this is my email that you can send me any comments or questions that uh, you have for it. So that's all I have for today. And uh, I'll stop sharing right now. Perfect. Thank you so much, Sherman. That was fantastic. Um, I guess I should hold space just uh, for one or two questions in case people have them and they they're going to forget them uh we will have q a at the end uh so if somebody would like to ask a question if they could just raise their hand uh, i'll just take a couple of seconds here to see if anybody wants to ask okay well christina you are next up uh i want to uh welcome ryan here to the meeting um so we are going um, again, just uh, alphabetically through the cities. So Christina, you're next, and then we'll go to Ryan after that. 
Hi, uh, thank you, Brock. I'm just gonna share my screen. Uh, there we go. Okay. Um, everyone can see it, right? Not. Oh, yet. all right. Sorry. Close this window. Um, there. Uh, all right. Is it coming through now? Yeah. Are you seeing? Okay, perfect. Yes. Seeing a PowerPoint? Yep. Okay, perfect. All right. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for letting me uh, present to you today. Uh, I am Christina Anna Curtis. I am Everett's, I have a lot of hats here at the city of Everett. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about my, uh, my bike helmet. Um, I wanna kind of go over some of the, the bike projects that uh, we have uh, going on at the city of Everett. Um, so my contact information is here. I'll have it again at the end of the, the PowerPoint. Um, feel free to, to email me, call me at any time. Uh, people who know me know exactly how much I love talking about this, so I'm always happy to talk to someone new. So, okay, next slide. So today I'm going to be talking about four different areas that uh, Everett has just released uh, some interesting information. Uh, so first is our Bicycle Friendly Community Bronze Level Award. We were recently awarded a Bronze Level Bicycle Friendly Community with the League of American Bicyclists. The award is presented to communities that have demonstrated impressive commitments to bicycling. It recommend, or recognizes the work that Everett has done to develop its bike network, making Everett a safer, more accessible community for cyclists of all abilities, uh, encouraging healthy and sustainable transportation source choices. And it also demonstrates Everett's commitment to embracing non-car travel to develop vibrant, healthy, and livable neighborhoods. As of fall 2021, there were 497 bicycle-friendly communities in the US. Uh, of the 19 ranked communities in Washington state, 13 are bronze, four are silver, and two are gold. So Everett is kind of in that bronze range with uh, 13 other cities in Washington state. Uh, our bicycle master plan was adopted by city council in 2011. Um, the, the award demonstrates the, the progress we've made on our plan. Uh, we are thrilled, excited, so proud to get this designation. Uh, again, we're committed to embracing non-car travel by providing residents with travel choices and making bicycling a more comfortable and attractive travel mode. So that was our bicycle friendly community designation. So the next program that I'm so excited to, to introduce is our bicycle friendly driver program. So we created a, a video um, that uh, it's an instructional video uh, as well as a self assessment exam, people who take the exam uh, can get a bicycle friendly driver sticker. So the, the program teaches viewers what it means to share the road with bicyclists, why that is the best practice. It shows bike infrastructure in the city of Everett that you are likely to encounter. It talks about what it means for bicyclists to take the lane, why a person riding a bike may need to do so. It, it includes exercises called legal or not that test uh, the viewers knowledge of the rules of the road in Washington State as they relate to bicyclists and motorists sharing the road. And then it covers uh, safer behaviors for bicyclists when riding and drivers when driving in sharing the road with bicycles. So again, uh, you can take take the exam, get a sticker. Uh, that is on our, our website, which I will again share at the end of the, um, the presentation. So the, the next program that uh, we just released is our interactive online um, bike tours. And let's see, we created six themed um, bike tours in the city of Everett. We have many beautiful bikeways to explore. We wanted to create some self-guided Scenic tours uh, hope to encourage people to see their community by bike. By bike. <laughs> uh, each tour tells you how many miles it will take to complete the entire route so you can ride 
from start to finish, or you can pick a point and ride from there. As I mentioned, we have six theme tours right now. We're gonna be adding more probably next year with bike month. Um, the six we have right now are our neighborhood tour, which you can um, tour through 16 of Everett's neighborhoods. Uh, we have a, actually, I'm gonna show that here. So we have, so that's our neighborhood tour. We have a transit station tour that will take you from Everett Station to Everett Mall Way uh, to Seaway Transit Center. Then we have our Legion Park to Silver Lake tour, which you can ride uh, from the northernmost tip of Everett at Legion Park to the southernmost tip of Everett at Silver Lake. Um, we have our Milltown Trail Park tour, which uh, lets you tour three different parks if you follow uh, the Milltown Trail, um, Henry Jackson Park, Grand Avenue Park, and then uh, Legion Park. And then we have, so the Henry Jackson to Rotary Park tour, which is the uh, northeast side of Everett from, as the name suggests, Henry Jackson Park to Rotary Park. And then the final tour that we have available is our golf course tour, which uh, will take you to all three golf courses in the city of Everett. I'm just gonna click on one, Let's see what's a good one. So uh, this is kind of the, the tour website, it takes you to the main page, it has um, a description of the, the tour, um, some instructions, uh, let's see tour information again, and then it'll start you through the tour. It'll have pictures of each location. So if you're writing, you can say, do a kind of a check of, oh, I'm in this place. This is where um, I'm supposed to be. Like if I need to make a turn, it has uh, each section of the tour has a description. It's labeled either confident or comfortable confident being appropriate, more appropriate for bicyclists who are skilled and confident riders. Uh, it has a comfortable section for bicycle uh, people of all age groups. Um, so again, you can kind of read about key destinations along the tour. Um, then you can go, okay, say it says, ride this direction, turn here. So um, that's something we're really excited about our bike tours. Encourage you to go to our website and check them out. Um, really great project that I, I'm excited to share. So that was our bike tours. Uh, last thing that I'm gonna I'm gonna try to to buzz through to kind of give give people time for questions or uh, to give other panelists time. But so we have um, a lot of exciting projects coming up, kind of under our Active Connections Everett program, uh, which is to say that our Active Connections program is very active. I like making that pun. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna kind of breeze through some of these projects and talk a little bit more in detail. Uh, three projects that, um, well, we have multiple projects that are in some stage of design, uh, either planning, uh, design, review stages. Uh, we have the 100th Street Southwest Pedestrian and Bike Corridor which in our bicycle master plan is a connection priority project. Uh, there are, it is 2.4 miles of bike facility and sidewalk currently in design, anticipated construction to begin 2026-ish. Uh, we have the Fulton Street connection, which is again, a tier one priority project in Everett's bicycle master plan. Uh, it's a point, point 0.5 mile uh, bike facility uh, connection between California Street and Everett Station. Uh, again, design scheduled to begin uh, later this year or early next year with construction in 2024. And then we also have our Wall Street connector, again, a tier one priority project connecting uh, Everett Station to the arena at Wall Street and Broadway. Currently under design, scheduled for construction uh, next year. So we have our citywide bicycle wayfinding project. Again, a tier one of, I'm sorry, I'm at the wrong one. Sorry, Active, uh, Active Connections California Street. 
So it is a tier one priority project. Again, it will construct a continuous pedestrian and bike facility from California Street at Broadway to the US2 trail at Hewitt and Chestnut. The goal of the project is to improve safety, providing a comfortable bike connection between downtown Everett and US2 trail. Uh, California Street, uh, the corridor is approximately three fourths, uh, 0.8 miles of bike facility and sidewalk. It's currently under design. We finished a public outreach campaign in November uh, last year. So hopefully a lot of you saw that campaign uh, to fill out the survey. Uh, currently uh, working on the 30% design phase and anticipate construction, hopefully 2025, 2026. So now the citywide bike wayfinding project, it will add wayfinding for nine existing bike routes, as well as improved signage at uh, nine intersections crossing the inner urban trail. Uh, the, the wayfinding signage is obviously at the, the bike pedestrian level, providing directions and distances to key locations in the city uh, route directions. So if the route turns, how to follow the route. Um, design is currently underway with construction anticipated um, spring of next year. So uh, next, actually, next current project that I want to talk about is our Fleming Bicycle Corridor. It is a tier one priority project in Everett's Bicycle Master Plan. It is a north-south bike boulevard uh, west of Evergreen that connects uh, Madison Street at Fleming to Federal Avenue at 35th Street. Uh, it connects multiple neighborhoods, our Port Gardner, South Everett, uh, Forest Park, View Ridge, Madison, um, as well as Evergreen neighborhoods. It connects to proposed um, priority projects in Everett's Bicycle Master Plan, uh, including it connects to um, proposed uh, bike corridors uh, that connect to Boeing, the Seaway Transit Center, uh, as well as connecting downtown Everett um, the bike boulevard elements that we'll be building are uh, wayfinding signage and sharrows, um, as well as constructing vehicle volume and speed management tre treatments to make it a proper bike boulevard. Uh, again, I mentioned it is a tier one priority project in the Bicycle Master Plan. It is currently under design with construction anticipated in 2023. So uh, last project that I want to talk about is our Madison Street uh, project. It is a 1.7 mile bike connection between the Inner Urban Trail and Seavers Ducey Boulevard. It uh, connects again to proposed bike facilities on Seavers Ducey as well as the coming uh, Fleming bike corridor that I just talked about. Uh, it again connects multiple neighborhoods. We completed a, another public outreach campaign um, mid-April of this year. So again, hopefully you saw the outreach campaign. You filled out our, su our survey. Uh, we are currently in preliminary analysis of the survey results, the traffic study. Uh, and then if the project moves forward, it will be built as part of our 2023 street resurfacing program. So uh, a lot of information I just crammed into, <laughs> into 15 slides. Uh, you can find more about our Bicycle Friendly Community Award, our Bicycle Friendly Driver Program, as well as bicycling in the city of Everett um, at everettwa.gov bikes. Again, my contact information is on the screen. Please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, I'm always happy to, to talk your ear off, so I'd love to hear from you. Uh, any any questions? Thank you, Christina. That was really fantastic. Uh, and I learned a few new things. I didn't know about the tours. Um, that I know there's been an ongoing fire station tour that's been organized by the Everett Bike Walk, but uh, these are great new tours. Um, there was a question in the chat about them. Um, you know, I, I think the tours are a really interesting idea because we often struggle with how to map things, how to get from point A to point B, 
in terms of communicating what is a safe route versus, or just like a designated route versus just trying to help people see the city. Exactly. Um, so sure, uh, sorry, so Vicky had a question and I was gonna call on Vicky to ask the question. Thanks, Brooke. Um, yeah, my question that I posted in the chat was about whether these uh, routes are on designated uh, bike lanes, bike facilities, I should say. Yes, the, the majority of the routes are uh, designated bike facilities when this, within the city of Everett. There were a few legs that um, are on low volume local city streets, uh, but for the most part, the majority of them are on constructed bike facilities in the city of Everett, which I think uh, is a really great way to highlight like uh, the, the miles and miles of bike facility we have that uh, help people realize, um, hey, this is out there, you can take this. So yes, uh, majority on constructed bike facilities. Oh, great, thanks. And then when, it, when it's not on a bike facility, is that very clearly labeled? Yes, yes. So in the instructions, actually, let me share my screen one more time. Uh, so in the instructions, uh, let's see, here we go. Share. Okay, there we go. So in, in the instructions, if it's not a designated bike facility, um, let me find a good point to show you. Uh, so here, uh, the leg that uh, we know people take to get to Boeing, but it'll say there are no bike facilities here, share the lane with vehicles, follow safe bike riding guidelines. So if there isn't one, it is designated. It is also designated as a confident leg so that people know, okay, if I'm more of a, a comfortable rider, I'm not a confident skilled rider, uh, you can take the tour where you feel comfortable and then uh, it will let you know if you, if you don't wanna ride there because you're less confident. Does that kind of answer your question? Long-winded Yeah, answer. yeah, that's great, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I hope folks got the sense of how I'm gonna approach the questions. Uh, so Sherman, uh, we have a cross panel uh, question from Sherman and Sherman, would you like to, to ask your question to Christian? Yeah, my question is how you, uh, what was the criteria that you used to, to define a com um, comfortable versus a confident route? Like, was it the facility type or, you know, just kind of what, are you, what did you use to de determine that? Uh, often it was the facility type. So um, like the inner urban trail is a, a separated shared use path, uh, separated from traffic. And so obviously that would be designated a comfortable route, um, confident, uh, often designated like a on-street bike lane. So um, if it was on uh, some of our busier roads, uh, for example, um, again, I'm gonna share my screen. I promise I'll make up my mind about sharing it or not. Uh, let's see. So good example is on 19th Street. Uh, there are bike lanes there, but it's a, it, 19th Street is a designated arterial. So I uh, indicated that that one was confident. So, oh, I am not sharing it, sorry, there. So uh, that was uh, one of our, our, one of the ways that we kind of uh, determine that hierarchy. Does that answer your question? So it was confident because was a low volume street, but even though it had bike lanes in the street or? So uh, 19 so kind of is, a, is an arterial. It is, does have bike lanes, but because the bike lanes are, are an arterial, I did, we designate it as confident. But um, if it's on, for example, again, the, uh, the interurban trail, like that's a separated trail. So we designate yeah. that as comfortable. So it was a combination of the facility type as well as the road type. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to do two last questions. Um, and then maybe at the end of the present, very end of our panel discussion, we might get to the third here. Um, so uh, Karsten asks about the section of Fleming. So Karsten, you want to ask your question? Yeah. Sure. Hi, Christina. Thanks for the presentation. Um, I'm wondering about the proposed street section on Fleming. I know it's kind of a detailed question, but I've, I've been wondering if the city has pursued any reductions in the automobile traffic lane width in order to make those necessary calming um, devices. So on, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Is that uh, end of your question? 
Okay, so on Fleming, we are building um, speed and volume management uh, treatments, which do narrow the travel lane. So um, there are sections where the, the roadway width from edge of pavement to edge of pavement is upward of 30 uh, feet. And uh, with the traffic management um, treatments, we're narrowing that to uh, 22 feet. So we are putting, um, we're calling them short median islands. They're, uh, I'm trying to, I'm not sure I have a picture of, of the, the island up, but it, it is a short island. It uh, diverts traffic around it to narrow that um, roadway width to call, have that uh, call, traffic calming element. Correct. Cool, thank you. Sure, And yeah. then final question, which will be a good transition. There's gonna be one presenter in between, but good transition to another panelist, which is uh, Brian. And I'm just gonna ask this one for you, Brian, which is what's being done to improve the connections to Marysville from Everett? Absolutely. So uh, the connection between Everett and Marysville is uh, a high priority connection in um, our bicycle master plan. The, the tricky part of that is, is uh, a good portion of that is on WashDOT right of way. They own the bridges. And so we, we have to work with them in terms of making that connection. Um, we, we're absolutely looking for opportunities to fund improvements between that connection. Thus far, uh, Washington hasn't found like a good fit for funding those improvements, but um, I absolutely know it's, it's a priority. It's a priority for Everett, for people who want to travel north uh, and don't currently have like a, a, a comfortable connection, but um, know it's a priority working on it. Nothing uh, funded as of yet. Okay, thank, thank you so much, Christina. Sure. Um, I'm gonna switch spotlights here. If I can figure out how to do that. Um, so Ryan, um, I know you don't have a presentation or a slide deck. Uh, I'm happy to share my, if you wanna share your screen, but I also could share a map on my screen. If that'd be helpful as you um, talk about a couple of the projects uh, that you're looking forward to in Lake Stevens. I know there's a trail project, there's a couple of projects from the move that had Washington package. Uh, so interested in learning what was happening there in Lake Stevens. Yeah, thanks Brock. I'm glad to be here today. Uh, yeah, if I could share my screen, I actually have um, one image I'll pull up. It's a map that shows um, what we're doing with the South Lake Stevens trail. That'd be great. I'm not sure how to take control here. Um, uh, if you just hit share screen, you should be able to. All right, we're in business. All right, thanks everybody. Um, my name is Ryan Wietholder. I'm the new city engineer with uh, Lake Stevens. I'm uh, glad to be here and um, please bear with me. I wasn't uh, quite up to speed and aware I was given a presentation today being new and all, but um, I'll do my best and bear with me. But I'd like to present just on the South Lake Stevens Trail uh, is a project that has been going on. We completed phase one last year and we're beginning design on phase two right now. And then um, also we're starting on conceptual on phase three. And, uh, you know, like big picture, what this trail does is it connects uh, the power line trail and snakes up South Lake Stevens Road, connecting the new commercial district, um, which is at uh, 20th Street Southeast that runs um, and intersects with State Route 9. That's where the new Costco is going. And it snakes through there up South Lake Stevens Road, passes uh, 20th Street Southeast, um, and then continues on the south of the lake to Machias Cutoff, and then um, will eventually connect to Centennial Trail and connect there. So that'll be the, the third phase. So Lake Stevens successfully built 4,500 linear feet of multi-use path in phase one. So this would be kind of in the middle section here. This is um, running up Stitch and uh, connects to um, East uh, Lakeshore Drive. And that um, begins down on the southwest corner here where you see this pink marker. That's where the police station is. And um, that's where we will begin phase two of construction in 2023. 
This is um, just entering design with KPFF. We're scoping right now and um, working out the award, uh, which began a couple of weeks ago with them. So um, getting active on that. That phase two will be designed this summer and this winter and eventually go out to bed and uh, begin construction in 2023. That will go from the police station just north of 20th Street Southeast and um, conclude at uh, a future roundabout at State Route 9. There's gonna be a roundabout built at State Route 9 where this concludes this summer and that'll provide a connection and um, multimodal uh, uh, crossing across State Route 9. And um, as far as phase two, um, Phase two would extend and safe, a safe and inviting pathway for pedestrians and cyclists to complete a critical link around South Lake Stevens to both side of State Route 9. Uh, the estimated phase two development and construction costs for South Lake Stevens multi-use path and State Route 9 crossing are estimated to be around $3 million. And um, I'll talk about phase three too. I don't know when we plan on going into construction for phase three. Um, that's kind of off in the distance. My focus is really on phase two at this moment, but phase three would extend from uh, where you head north right here on, it's kind of hard to see my mouse here, but right here on um, East Lakeshore heading north. That, that's where the final steps will begin for phase three. That'll continue down much highest cutoff and then uh, conclude at uh, Centennial Trail. And that would be about 31 100 linear feet from Machias Cutoff to 123rd Avenue Southeast. So the final connection uh, would link to a proposed county trail and ultimately the Centennial Trail. So the estimated cost of phase three is also 3 million. And that's really what we're, we're doing right now. That's the biggest project we have for bicycles within the city, but of course we're also improving and thinking about, you know, bicycle safety and design and multimodal um, uh, connections throughout the city of Lake Stevens with new projects and including that within other designs. And that's that's really it in a nutshell where we're at and where we're moving. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Ryan. Um, maybe I'll just lead with a, a couple of questions or, or information. Um, so phase two, I think uh, th the three million within the move ahead Washington package. So it seems like it's fully funded um, with whatever with that, whatever timeline that money comes in from the state, and I'm not sure that's determined yet, um, but that seems great. The, the package also included money for um, 16th Street Northeast Centennial Trail Connector, phase one. Um, do you have a timeline for that project? For phase one? Yeah. Uh, um, phase one was completed if uh, this would be the red portion, um, this right here was phase one. Uh, no, no, no. for uh, 60, it, north east uh, Lake Stevens. So not in this project area, um, 16th Street Northeast. Oh, 16th Street Northeast. Yeah. Ooh, that, um, that's pretty far out. We're doing some uh, preliminary or conceptual engineering design on that. If, if I'm thinking about the same one, this is the one that connects the, um, yeah. the, the future downtown Lake Stevens. This is correct by North Cove. Yep. Yeah, that, that project, that's pretty far out yet. That could be several years. I know we're looking at conceptual and preliminary design. Um, I'm not really driving that project forward right now. It's more of our planning department, so I can't really speak in any detail to it, but I would say that's probably um, at least two years off. Okay. Well, these are exciting trail connection projects and connecting um, eventually all both of these into the Centennial Trail and into the Powerline Trail. So uh, that's really great. Any questions for Ryan from um, our audience? I don't see any. So thank you, Ryan. We're going to go to the great city of Marysville. Um, so Jesse, you can come on screen. Perfect. Um, and I, I need to change my spotlights again. And Brock, if you could uh, bring up the presentation and share it, that would be great. Thank you for reminding me of <laughs> doing that. Um, 
And okay. Is that showing how you would like to see it shown full screen? That uh, looks good. Perfect. Um, All right. I assume you, yeah. Go ahead whenever you're ready and tell me when to move slides. Okay. So, um, you know, City of Marysville, what I'll discuss is, you know, some of the some overlap of uh, what other agencies have, have discussed, uh, but, you know, essentially the Marysville plan. And now uh, you can go on. Um, so, you know, this slide shows, you know, the existing uh, network as of 2014. And, you know, as part of our 2015 um, adopted city comprehensive plan, we uh, focused uh, some extensive uh, effort on developing a bicycle system uh, plan. This identifies, um, you know, the system throughout Marysville and all of the different um, type of facilities, as well as um, some connections outside of the city to other agencies. Um, we intended for this plan to identify the type of facilities. Um, however, we were, were sort of um, uh, setting this as a, uh, a uh, Sorry, there's a plane going overhead. <laughs> so we were uh, realizing that there would be some context uh, changes and some citizen input in the future on projects that may, you know, may have us change from bike lanes to say multi-use paths or uh, you know other type changes to the plan. So we wanted to make it flexible and we've we have, uh, you know, as projects developed, um, been flexible in a lot of a lot of areas and changed, say, you know, for industrial areas where the plan called for bike lanes on some arterial facilities. Um, realized that, you know, you know, and the developers as they were coming in were like, we really don't want to want to have our our uh, businesses, you know, in the large warehousing, uh, interacting as closely in bike lanes. We'd prefer to build multi-use trails, and the city is in agreement with that in a lot of areas, um, you know, as well as you know other changes. So um, we can go to the next slide. So um, one of the big things we wanted to do was make sure there's connections to outside agencies and work with those other agencies um, or identify the plan, you know, at least identify, you know, those proposed connections so that we're um, focusing on those outside connections in the future. So, you know, we're surrounded by, you know, Snohomish County. So some connections um, primarily to the west of the city, west of I-5 into the Snohomish County, um, you know, area, as well as, you know, a future connection on the Northern city portion of Marysville to the Centennial Trail at 152nd Street. Um, you know, a big priority, and this was discussed by Everett is, you know, a connection for Marysville citizens to the South uh, along 529, you know, or any really any connection that would be feasible, um, you know, between the city of Marysville and Everett. So we've had some conversations, you know, the city of Everett and WashDOT and looking at, at funding opportunities in the future, um, knowing that there's, there's some significant hurdles on that, on that path, um, specifically the, the draw bridges or swinging bridges um, in order to uh, get a, you know, bicycle facility on that route. But there's some major reasons for the city of Marysville to desire that um, with, you know, Everett Community College and Providence and just everything that's in North, North Everett, just a short distance away for, for bicycle commuters. Um, also working with the city of Arlington who shares, um, here I've got labeled Arlington Marysville Mick area, but I was reminded that it's the Cascade Industrial Center. So, you know, focusing on that area for, you know, a multimodal uh, network of roadways, whereas now, you know, there's essentially, you know, open, open fields, 
there's a lot of plans in that area. Um, you know, City of Lake Stevens, um, you know, working on extension of the Bayview Trail um, south of State Route 529 through the city of Marysville, and then, you know, with future into uh, City of Lake Stevens, I believe at 8th Street uh, is the, the goal, as well as west into the Tulale Tribes area, uh, you know, 1st Street and 88th Street being uh, the identified routes. So we can go to the next slide. Um, so this will just, just, the next few slides will discuss some of the projects that we've completed in recent years um, and show basically the planned uh, roadway network. Um, you know, we completed the First Street Bypass um, just a few years ago. That includes uh, multi-use trails as well as bike lanes. And we've also completed a section of the EB Waterfront Trail that's along Sunnyside Boulevard, essentially from 53rd Avenue out to uh, 52nd Street in the neighborhood in that vicinity with plans for uh, at least one or two more phases of that project to get it in all the way into downtown Marysville. Uh, next slide. Um, the middle of town, we, you know, in the, the downtown area, get, as well as the Getchell Hill area, um, we've completed uh, the Bayview Trail section between Stair Route 528 and 84th Street, oh, excuse me, as well as last year completing the connection to the Centennial Trail from 84th Street to the north, um, just west of Stair Route 9. Um, we also have some upcoming projects. Um, the 8th Street project from Cedar Avenue to State Avenue includes bike lanes. Uh, you know, they're, um, and it's almost complete. The only part that's not complete is the final striping for the project. Um, the same thing with Cedar Avenue. We've done some, some improvements there to, you know, to change the, there was some existing bike lane infrastructure, but it's only one directional. So we've uh, done some changes there and there are some upcoming changes uh, to uh, beautify that corridor, you know, add out, you know, some uh, stormwater facilities and incorporate bicycle and pedestrian in there. And that, that as well is uh, awaiting the final striping, which should occur you know, within the next month, hopefully. Uh, the city also is, you know, building a civic campus, uh, which is, uh, I believe the police and courts are about ready to move in within the next month. Um, the remainder of city hall will be moving in in September. And that includes, you know, essentially a Wooner style pedestrian and bike, you know, vehicles, uh, low speed sort of, uh, uh, treatment in front of the civic campus uh, with plans to expand that and create some more connectivity to the south in the future. Um, the next slide. Then we have the northern section of the city, which uh, is the Lakewood Master Plan area, as well as the Cascade Industrial Center. Um, this area, we've the only project we could, we've really completed at this stage is uh, the bicycle facilities on the north side, uh, multi-use path on 172nd Street from 23rd to 27th. However, <clears throat> this area is, you know, as I'll discuss, there's a lot going on in this area in the near future. <clears throat> Next slide. And you know, as all agencies have to, um, we're we're looking at all basically all of our funding sources um, that are available, whether that be you know local just portion of our capital you know improvement budget. Um, a significant portion of the city will be reliant on development frontage improvements and new roadways as part of development. Um, those you know private developments um, you know are really going to be spending a lot of money on the transportation system, including, you know, the pedestrian bicycle networks. Um, we also look at <clears throat> the safe routes to school programs, uh, pedestrian bicycle grants, um, HSIP grants for more, uh, more small, you know, type uh, improvements, um, you know, trans TIB grants through the states. Uh, we have so 
some uh, projects that'll be funded as part of the 2015, you know, connecting Washington, you know, legislation as well as our, you know, uh, city uh, mayor and council and administration advocating for future funding with, you know, from the state and being, you know, pretty successful there. Uh, we also look at CMAC grants, you know, SDP, uh, and we've used some community development block grants to do uh, some downtown area sidewalk and minor roadway widening to make it more, you know, pedestrian and uh, multimodal friendly um, on some corridors. Um, so really looking at everything and there's some, you know, new federal, you know, grants that are just coming out there that, you know, we'll likely be looking at as well. So, um, next slide. So what's next? I mean, really, there's a lot that's upcoming. These are some of the, the projects that are funded, you know, um, that should occur in the next few years. We've got an 80th Street non-motorized project. Uh, the design and right-of-way for that project was a CMAC grant. Um, we're now about to start. Um, that project should go out to bid sometime this summer. Um, and that'll basically provide uh, pedestrian and bicycle facilities on 80th Street from State Avenue to 51st Avenue. Uh, we are at 30% design on improvements to the 88th Street uh, corridor from State Avenue to 67th Avenue. Um, we're actually beginning to uh, procure right away for that project this summer and are actively seeking funding um, through TIB and STP funds to construct that corridor. You know, currently that corridor is essentially a, you know, almost a rural standard within a, you know, the central core of Marysville, one lane in each direction. That's planned to be a, a three lane roadway uh, with a two way left turn lane and 12 foot multi use paths on both sides of the roadway. Um, you know, with uh, addition of a uh, uh, another traffic signal, um, some uh, two culvert replacements, and essentially uh, probably a 10-year project. Uh, we're seeking funding for phase one uh, or construction, which would be from east of State Avenue to 55th Avenue. Uh, but once that's completed, it provide a bicycle network um, essentially from State Route 9 almost all the way to State Avenue on uh, 88th Street and Ingraham Boulevard and 84th Street. Uh, we also have two Safe Routes to School grants that uh, should go to construction in 2024. Um, you know, not directly, you know, bicycle related, but the Community Transit Gold Line, you know, is slated for, I believe, 2027 construction. Um, so that, you know, and that'll provide, uh, you know, rapid transit through the city, you know, from, you know, Everett, you know, to Arlington, um, which will, you know, provide more connectivity for everyone. Uh, we also have within the Connecting Washington legislation, uh, the 156 and I-5 interchange. That project will include a 12-foot multi-use trail across I-5 on 156th Street on the north side of, of 156. Um, we also have a couple of signalization projects on Sunnyside Boulevard uh, and 61st, uh, which 61st Street Northeast becomes Sunnyside Boulevard um, on the east side of downtown. Those signalization projects also include bike lanes. Um, and the, the 61st Street and 53rd Avenue actually includes a multi-use trail um, connecting Jennings Park uh, north of 528 to the EB uh, Waterfront Trail on Sunnyside Boulevard. Um, so it's really a multi, not just a signalization project, it's a, a multimodal, you know, project for all. Um, we also have uh, the Bayview Trail extension, and that's from State Route 528 to Sober Hill Road, and then ultimately into Lake Stevens. Uh, we received, uh, I believe it was $500,000 for design of that. And I, my understanding is there will be a uh, online open, open house sort of uh, forum for public input that is scheduled for later this summer uh, to get input on that from, from citizens. 
Um, and then next slide. So, and really where, where a lot of the infrastructure in the city of Marysville, we've got some large sections of the city that are undergoing drastic changes with development and, you know, some significant plans for, you know, our bicycle network. Um, you know, in the southern portion of the town, the Sunningside area and Whiskey Edge Ridge area, um, just areas that actually have active development, um, you know, whether it's, you know, from a Puri app, you know, through like construction, you know, plan approval. We've got a significant number of projects on 87th Avenue, which is planned to have uh, 12 foot multi use paths on both sides uh, from Soper Hill to 60th Street and potentially 64th Street to the north. Uh, we've uh, project currently is almost through uh, construction plan approval um, in coordination with Lake Stevens that'll provide a multi-use trail on the north side of Soper Hill Road uh, from State Route 9 to 83rd Avenue um, or actually from you know two different projects that ultimately go all the way to say 83rd Avenue. Uh, we have a number of projects along Sunnyside Boulevard that will be widening that to incorporate bike lanes, um, as well as 44th Street and 83rd Avenue. I mean, essentially a construction zone in this area with a multitude of development projects completed and underway and, you know, about to be begin. Um, so next slide. Uh, let's see, the Lakewood Master Plan area. Um, this area is uh, basically almost all of the parcel, I think there may be three or four parcels um, in this entire area that do not have some level of development currently proposed. Um, the Really what's holding up development in this area right now is the lack of sewer, which the developers are in the process of designing uh, with potentially uh, some level of construction this summer and or next summer. And once that occurs, this whole area is very likely to develop uh, within a number of years to include, um, you know, some significant single and multifamily housing as well as some uh, uh, medical type facilities, apartments, um, you know, retail commercial on a variety of things and uh, and create a whole roadway network uh, with multi-use trails bike lanes and really increase the mobility in this area uh, as it's constructed um, and then we'll go next slide uh, and this the cascade industrial center similar to the lakewood area um, there's a planned roadway network um, incorporating mostly multi-use paths on all the arterials, except for our one of our major north-south uh, connections through the city is anticipated to be 51st Avenue, which will be uh, will include uh, bike lanes. Um, so all, a lot of new roadways with multi-use paths, um, you know, anticipated in this area within the next five to, to 10 years. And then, uh, upcoming city funding priorities. So, you know, we're always looking for funding priorities. We were, you know, in the, as many of you are probably in the process of uh, uh, applying for Safe Routes to School funding for some projects, uh, as well as uh, completing, we had 83rd Avenue um, between 84th Street and State Route 528 is one of those roadways where it's almost built out with bike lanes and sidewalk the entire length, but it has three or four small gaps. So we're looking at, you know, prioritizing, you know, uh, some grant applications or even city funding to finish that out. Uh, we're also prioritizing, you know, 88th Street and that and seeking funding, actively seeking funding for multiple sources. Uh, with the goals of having that completed, you know, potentially within the next 10 years. Um, EB Waterfront Trail, extending that into downtown Marysville and connecting essentially between 53rd Avenue and the First Street Bypass. 
So there's, you know, bicycle facilities, um, you know, from the Sunnyside community all the way into downtown. Um, and then uh, there's a section of 156th Street uh, that is currently built out with the exception of the, the multi-use path that we're looking to prioritize. Uh, we also have the, you know, priorities of, you know, working with uh, Everett and WashDOT to come up with a funding solution for 529, as well as working with uh, Lake Stevens on the Bayview Trail extension. And, you know, forget if that's the last slide or if there's one more. That's it. I'm going to stop right. share if that's okay, Jesse. And then that so, way I can see the chat. <laughs> um, uh, we'll take a couple questions and then we need to get to um, we need to get to Claire uh, to provide the final presentation. So um, oh, just checking the chat. Um, Brian, I'm going to save your question because it's mostly for community transit. So I'm going to save that question. Um, so Vicky, you're up. Great. Uh, my question, um, obviously, you just talked a lot about a, new, a lot of new development, especially I think you just talked about a brand new neighborhood, mixed use, single family, multifamily. And so my question is, how is the city thinking about how those new residents and new workers will get around? Is there a, a, a holistic plan about mode share goals? Um, and that's my question. So, I mean, essentially we're, we're relying on our transportation comp plan um, that has, you know, an extensive plan for, you know, roadway widening of existing roadways, as well as, um, you know, especially in the Lakewood area, the Whiskey Ridge area, the, the Cascade Industrial area, an extensive new uh, roadway network, um, you know, and relying on, you know, develop and relying and sticking to, you know, developers constructing those roadways um, as they are developing, um, as well as, you know, uh, requiring, um, you know, a full analysis of traffic impacts, you know, with each development and making sure that one developer uh, doesn't, uh, you know, degrade the roadway network um, unnecessarily. Um, but we're, we, you know, we, and we're tweaking those roadways and looking at them, you know, pretty consistently. We've, we've recently re-looked at the Lakewood master plan area, or the, not the lake, or we're in the process of re-looking at the Lakewood master plan area, just to make sure that, um, that we're going to adequately address um, some traffic issues. Um, as well as we looked at the Cascade industrial area, um, you know, and that's partially as developments come in and uh, more wet, you know, wetlands and more, you know, concerns sort of arise um, that are affecting the transportation network, just making sure that it's going to work. Thank you, uh, Vicki. I should just, uh, Vicki is the policy director for the Cascade Bicycle Club uh, and I believe current resident of Island County. Um, so just Kitsap County, close. Kitsap County. Kitsap County. Yes. Okay. Thanks. So, um, I'm going to shift this to Claire because we do need to make sure she has enough time. So, uh, I will switch spotlights and then Claire, you can share your screen. Awesome. I am going to dive right in here. So good afternoon, folks. I'm Claire Martini. Uh, I staff the Leafline Trails Coalition. And today I wanted to share who and what is Leafline Trails Coalition in case you're not familiar with our work and give an exciting sneak preview of the map vision that we're going to be launching uh, next Wednesday on June 1st, hopefully with Governor Inslee provided he's well enough, saw the unfortunate news that he's got COVID, um, but we'll share with you some insights about what's next with the launch of that map vision, including gap filling, conversations about investment strategy in the regional trails network, uh, opportunities for wayfinding and signage. And then if there's time, I'll do a brief, brief snapshot of some recent policy coordination because there's some fun stuff here in Snohomish County. So the mission of the Leafline Trails Coalition is, is pretty simple. It's just to connect the trails network across central Puget Sound. So we work in King, Kitsap, Pierce, and Snohomish counties, the same geographic footprint as Puget Sound, 
regional council. And we want to do that to kind of maximize the benefits of trails for communities, including uh, health, mobility, quality of life, environmental. There's a lot, lot to dig into around the trails network. But I want to recognize that while you're seeing me as the project manager, um, the coalition is much, much larger. We've actually got about 60 members and public partners, many of them um, around the four county region. So we include governments, we include businesses, community organizations, as well as individuals can participate in the work of the coalition. One of the questions we often get is what kind of trails are, are we focused on? So trails in the LeafLine network are typically wide, off street, feasible, feasible being built, <laughs> uh, multi-use, uh, connected to each other, to destinations or to transit, and have a paved or gravel surface type. I alluded to this earlier, but trails relate to health, to community building, uh, transportation, either as a way to get around the mode alone, if you're walking, biking, or rolling, or a way to access transit and be, be really a functional part of the integrated mobility network. Uh, trails are huge for access to nature, kind of where are the ways that you can get outdoors uh, close to where you live rather than needing to travel out to the mountains or to public lands farther afield. We know that there's a lot of environmental benefits that go along with creating these green corridors uh, in urban and suburban and rural environments. So often goes hand in hand with environmental restoration and conservation, as well as recreational and tourism benefits. So the coalition has been working on a project we've referred to as the shared map vision. Um, I'm gonna fly through this slide here and instead just jump straight to sharing my screen with the map vision and hope that Brock can maybe help get slides to you after this meeting if there are more questions about the text. Um, but this is the map that we're gonna officially unveil on Wednesday. And we analyzed data for existing and planned trails in the network. We did include a few existing or planned on, on street facilities. But we actually found a, we had a vision here for more than 900 miles of trails connecting those those four counties. And as of today, that network is about 56% complete. So there's all, all kinds of fun analysis that we can do with this GIS tool. But here's just a really quick snapshot with um, existing trails shown in this teal color and planned trails shown in um, in orange. So you can see if you click on a trail, it'll show you the name of it uh, as well as the jurisdiction. Um, and this is this is our first go at releasing this public facing map with the intent to really build it out and make it a helpful tool for the coalition to have conversations about gap filling, about investment, about where uh, wayfinding and signage can go to really communicate um, these trails is not only you know the chunk the chunk of a network that you might know in your backyard but really part of a four county system with a lot of opportunities to connect so it was really helpful to hear from marysville from everett from all the cities that spoke about um starting to work on cross city or cross jurisdictional connections and that's really core to the mission the mission of the coalition here i know brock that we're super short on time. So maybe I will jump to just mentioning that on Monday, uh, many, many folks, uh, including Brock, were out on the trails with Representative Larson. We did a policy ride that started and ended in Mount Lake Terrace, really trying to help inform and inspire um, our, our congressional leaders about the work of the coalition and opportunities to invest in trails and active transportation spines and networks. And with all of the efforts around the bipartisan infrastructure law, I think there's a lot of opportunities to uh, help make those connections between folks who are doing work related to trails in, in different sectors. 
And last, I will note, we'd love to have you all as members and public partners. I'm gonna drop a few links in the chat here um, and would love to share more with you all either on June 1st when we do our formal map vision unveiling or we've got our next quarterly coalition meeting on June 16th. So a couple links to follow in the chat, but hopefully Brock that got us in under, under the bell here. We're still under, we have time for a couple questions um as we close out here so if folks have questions uh, let me know and it can be for any of the panelists at this point um sarah you flipped on your your camera um back when um jesse was talking so i'm wondering if you have a question um for jesse no oh, sorry i just you pulled the screen share down so i turned my camera on <laughs> so hi great I see from Vicki, what's next after releasing the LeafLine map vision? So two things. Number one, we have recently were notified we, we were selected as a National Park Service project for um, rivers and trails conservation assistance. So we're, they're not contributing funding, but they are going to contribute some capacity. And so we're going to leverage that partnership to help uh, have additional coalition conversations about gap filling and investment, sort of how do we take the analysis we've done to figure out those opportunities for additional coordination or new funding strategies, gaps that really need to be filled. And then number two, I would say is immediately now that we've defined that network more formally, there's a lot of opportunity to coordinate on wayfinding and signage. Um, that, those were some of the slides that I, I skipped over, but we will be going in much more detail on that at our June 16th coalition meeting. Um, yeah. So thank you for the opportunity to share. Fantastic. Well, I want to thank all of our panelists for attending today. Thank you for the work that you're doing in your communities. Um, I, you know, every little bit that we do is going to make a difference for making sure that uh, all people can get around safely and comfortably and we're better, creating better communities. So thank you for your work. Um, I'm going to end on just a couple of uh, plugs here. Um, so bear with me. First uh, is next month, June is ride transit month. And so um, we are shifting from bike month to transit month, you still get a ride a vehicle. Um, but uh, Transportation Choices Coalition is doing a series of events, I encourage you to go to transportationchoices.org and see what those events are. Um, to be able to participate. And certainly Snowtrack will help share out some of the activities. And finally, if you'd like to get more involved in Snowtrack or just learn about uh, transportation issues that are happening in Snohomish County, I encourage you to join our newsletter. Um, and there's, it's packed with information all the time. So uh, thank you all for joining us here today. Uh, if you have any follow-up, feel free to email me, uh, brock at ghostnotrack.org, um, and I'll try best to answer your questions or refer you to the panelists. Thank you all.